There are two ways of sorting Swift data queries. The easy way is to add extra values to this at query macro. For example, you might want to say, I want to sort my destinations by their name. So I'm going to say at query sort backslash destination dot name. Now it will be sorted alphabetically, first A, then B, then C, and so forth. Or we could say, I want to sort by perhaps priority. That will do lowest priority first. But I could say priority with an order of reverse. So highest priority things first. This approach only handles one thing to sort by. But if you want more than one, if you want to say, for example, uh, priority descending, but then name ascending, you want to use an array of sort descriptors instead. So we say instead, I want to sort with an array of sort descriptor. The first one will be uh, destination priority using order of reverse. So highest priority first, uh, dot reverse. And then uh, comma, another sort descriptor using the key path of destination name as ascending by default like that. And now we get priority first, then name second. And you can have as many as you want to have, three, four, five, you really need to. It just works with them all one by one in order to distinguish between different items. This approach works great when you know your sort order at compile time. But very often you want your user to choose sort order. Perhaps they can say now sort by name, now sort by priority, whatever you want to dynamically rather than you forcing it in in code. This approach takes significantly more work because properties made by this at query macro don't expose any kind of sort order property we can change dynamically. Instead, we're going to move this whole query property down one view in SwiftUI's hierarchy. We're going to put it into a sub view where we can inject a sort order using that view's initializer. So the first step is to press Command N, make a new SwiftUI view. Call this thing a destination listing view. Then press Create and add your Swift data import to the top, like so. Next, we've got to move some code from content view into here. So in content view here, we have this destinations property. Grab that whole thing, the whole at query line there, cut to your clipboard and paste into this new view here. Second, move the whole list this thing here, but not its modifiers, just list view itself. So list down to the closing brace here, grab that whole thing and paste that into destination listing view. Boom. Then also from content view, you want to move this delete destinations modifier method too. So grab that again, command X, then paste that into your new view down here. You'll also have to copy our model context. So we want it here to delete stuff. But then in our content view, we also want it here so we can add destinations as well. So you want to leave it here, select it, copy it to your clipboard, and then paste it into the new listing view as well as the current query like that. And finally, make this thing be made in content view where that list was previously. So in content view, I'll just say destination listing view, then those modifiers we had before. Boom. As you can see, it looks the same, right? We'll just move some code around a little bit here, which means the app will look and work identically when it runs. However, because this new destination listing view is a sub view of content view, we can now send values into there to control the Swift data query that's being run. This takes five steps in total, it's not easy. Step one, we make some storage here to hold whatever is the user's current sort order, so it's customizable. Step two, we add some UI to content view so you can change sort order based on what the user actually wants to have. Step three, we'll upgrade this list, new listing view here to say you've got to give me the sort order to use. Step four, make its preview send an example sort order in. And step five, pass the user sort order into that view. 
We're going to work through these step by step. First, add a new property here to track the current sort order with a sensible default. We'll say at state private var sort order is a sort descriptor with the key path of destination dot name. So sort by name alphabetically by default. That's our goal here. Next up, we're gonna it's playing it. Why are you it before? Can I can't even find this thing? Context. Why not? Insert root. Oh, I see why. Sorry, I'm being a dummy. There's a dot there by accident. <laughs> um, second, we're gonna make a menu button in our toolbar that lets users switch between the various sort orders we care about. That means uh, by name, by priority, and by date. So in our toolbar here, I'm gonna say there's a new menu button here called sort with a system image of the sort image, which is uh, arrow dot up dot and, nope, arrow down, like that, I think, yeah. Then inside there will be a picker called sort, bound to the selection of our sort order, and then our options we want to work with. So we'll say one option is sort by name, that has a tag of our sort descriptor, uh, destination, destination, dot name. Then we have a text of priority uh, that has a tag of uh, oops, sort descriptor, destination, dot priority, uh, priority. I'll add to this thing, actually, it's also order of reverse, so it's high priority by default. And then text of date, debt eight. Come on, Hudson, date, there we go. Um, with a tag of sort descriptor, destination.date, like so. Now, a little tip here, if you give your picker the picker style of inline, it avoids the extra menu thing appearing in your toolbar. Third, we're gonna modify an initializer in our destination listing view. As a default one from Swift, that's fine. We want a custom one that accepts a destination sort of to use for its query. So over here. Now, because we're trying to change the query itself, the actual thing behind the macro, not the finished array, we have to use the hidden underscored name to write the underlying property wrapper being made behind the scenes. So we'll say below in it, uh, below body, sorry, is a new initializer that takes a sort option here. There should be some kind of sort descriptor that applies to the destination model. And then we want to write to underscore destinations. That is the query object. Don't try and write to the main destinations thing. That's an array. You don't want that. You want underscore destinations, the actual query itself. And this will make the new query using sort of an array of that one descriptor. And finally, we've got to make sure we pass in various values at the right time. So you can see, for example, we want to have uh, a default sort down here. So we might say our sort order will be uh, sort descriptor. I'll do uh, destination.name by default. That's for the preview, that's fine. But then in our content view, we want to pass in the actual real sort order down here. So we'll do sort of sort order. That's the state we made earlier that user chose from. And all this work really is to push sort ordering up one level from our listing view. So we have our content view being responsible for showing the UI and choosing sort order, then injecting that value into the listing view so it works customizably, dynamically, when the app actually runs. So now hopefully if we add some more values, I only have a one or two right now. Let's see, you know, you know, run for me. Gonna go nice and slow for me. Come on, Xcode, you can do it. There we go. Uh, let's delete this blank one. So we've got Capri, Naples, Roman, Verona, and I can choose sort and say I want to do uh, priority or date, whatever, and they sort differently every time, which is really, really nice. 